Hey, it's you bro, hope you're doing well, and in this video we're going to be discussing borders in CSS, so let's get into it. To kick off this lesson, we're going to need some sample text. I'm going to create a heading and then a paragraph, so I'll use an h1 header tag, and I will call this border demo, and then we're going to close this. Next, we'll add a paragraph. We'll just need some sample text to work with. If you're using Sublime Text, you can just type in lorem and hit tab. Then you'll have a sample paragraph to work with. And I'm going to surround this with a pair of paragraph tags. Let's save this, reload the page. That'll be good for now. So I have a style sheet that's linked to this HTML file. So that was covered in the first lesson for this CSS tutorial series. So let's get on to creating borders. The first thing that we want to do is to create a border, perhaps around this paragraph. So we'll want to target the P tag, the paragraph tag, and then we'll add a set of curly brackets. So there's different styles of border, and you'll want to specify what kind of border that you want. Let's start with something simple, just a plain solid border. So to add a border, you're going to type border dash style colon and then the type of style that you want for this border. I'll showcase a few of these, but let's begin with a simple solid border. So let's save this, refresh the page, and we have a border around our targeted HTML element. Now, if you were to take a look at this paragraph, you'll notice that the text is very close to the border and it might be difficult to read some of the letters. So there's this property in CSS called padding. It's the distance between the text and the border. So by default, it's set to zero. So we can actually add some space between the text and the border. Think of it like, you know, when you get a package from like Amazon or in the mail, there's like bubble wrap or packing peanuts within the box. It's between your item and the actual box itself. It's the padding between the text and the border. So let's create a padding property and let's give us five pixels of room. So I'm going to type 5px for pixels. I'll save this, reload the page. Now we have some distance between the text and the border, and I find that easier to read. If we want something ridiculous like 50 pixels, you know, we can do that, although this probably doesn't look too great, but it might be useful for something. So like I said, padding is the distance between the text and the border. Think of it like you receive a package, the text is the item, the box is the border, and the padding is like the styrofoam, packing peanuts, or bubble wrap that's between your item and the box. But in this case, it's the text and the border. I hope that makes sense. All right, so let's cover a few other styles. So this was a solid border, but I don't want this much padding between my text and the border. Uh, so let's just stick with five for now. I think that's decent. So I'm going to cover a few different border styles, and some of these might pique your interests. So border style, colon, and then let's go with a perhaps dashed border. So let's save, reload. So we have this nice dashed border around our text. This border somewhat reminds me of like a coupon in an ad or something where you cut along the dash border to take out the coupon from the ad or something. I don't know, maybe if you're making a website that has printable coupons, you can create a dash border around each coupon. Oh, and one thing that I want to mention before I forget, with CSS properties, if you have multiple values assigned to the same property, you'll actually end up using the most recent value that's assigned to that specific property. For example, we have two border styles, solid and dashed. Well, it's the same property, but we're going to end up using the most recently assigned value, which is dashed. Like if I were to switch these around, and I were to place dashed first and then solid, we would actually end up using the solid border because that was the value that was last assigned to that property. So for this example, I'll be showing a bunch of different border styles and I'll just have them all listed here, but it's only going to be displaying the most recently assigned value. So let's cover a few border styles and you might like some of these. So we're going to type border style and this next one is the dotted border style. So. This is what it looks like. We have border style double, and this is a double border. 
I think I'm just going to copy this to save a little bit of time. So border style ridge. So that one, it looks like it has a shadow around it, which is kind of cool. Border style groove. Like it's groovy, like we're in the 70s. That's pretty much the same, but it's slightly darker. Border style inset. And this has a 3D effect. It's kind of like it's pushed in like a button or something. And the inverse of this is outset. And it has a 3D pop out effect of some sort. This one I would say is my favorite because it's kind of like it's 3D. Um, so those are a few of the border styles. Let's discuss the border width property. So we can increase the width of the border. So border dash width. And maybe let's assign three pixels to the width of this. So 3px. And the border is slightly thicker. So if you're using like an inset or outset border, it actually looks like it's popping out of the screen slightly more. Um, if we did a dash border, this is obviously going to be a thicker line. Uh, so that's the border width property. Now, you can actually assign a few different widths. And here's an example. Let's say 3 pixels, 5 pixels, 3 pixels, 5 pixels. So let's see what this looks like first, and then I'll explain this. So if you have a border width with four different values, the first value is going to apply to the northern top border. The second is the right eastern border. The third one is south or the bottom. And the fourth one is the left border or west one. So you can either assign four different values. You can have them all be the same. Otherwise, you can just assign one universally to all sides. So for this example, I'll just keep five pixels so it's all the same size then. All right, let's change the border color. So border dash color. You can either just type in a generic name such as green. Another option is to use a hexadecimal value. You can look those up online if there's a specific color you like. I think I will pick the color 00FF00, which is a bright green color. So let's save this, reload the page. And this border is now a very bright green color. Now there's another property called border radius. The radius will give you rounded borders, kind of like they're smooth, but these borders are very sharp right now. So border dash radius. So if we were to assign maybe a one pixel radius, this will slightly smooth out the uh, edges of the border. It's a little bit difficult to see if it's just one pixel. Let's try something more drastic like five pixels. So you can see that the borders are much more smooth now. Let's try maybe 10. That might be a lot more noticeable. Yeah, 10 is very noticeable. These corners are no longer sharp. It's kind of like you filed the corners down. So that's kind of what the border radius is. You're smoothing out the edges of this. So that's a basic border that you can use around whatever element that you want. So with our header tag, let's get a little crazy. We can target specific sides of your border. So let's target the H1 header tag. And the first thing that we can do is that let's target a like bottom border perhaps. So if you want to target a specific side of the border, you'll type in border dash, perhaps bottom. Otherwise there's top, left, and right. But let's target the bottom for now. And let's set the style to perhaps maybe dotted. Oh, but make sure you spell border right, not board. Border. There, we're good. All right, so we have a single bottom border to this H1 element. Let's do the same thing for the top. So I'll just copy that, and we're going to change bottom to top. Let's save, reload. All right, so we have a border that only has two sides. It doesn't have a left side or a right side. Let's target the left side, perhaps. So border left style let's do something different perhaps solid all right we're getting somewhere and let's target the width of just the left border so you're actually able to do that border dash then it is left dash width maybe 10 pixels 
So you can individually change the sizes or width of a single side of your border. You just have to list it specifically. Otherwise, if you do just border style, it applies to all sides. So you also have the capability to color an individual side of your border. Let's say we want to color just this left border. We'll type in border dash left dash color, and we can assign a color to this. I will pick the hexadecimal value of 00FF00. That was the bright green color that we had before. Uh, but taking a look at this, I actually don't like it on second thought. Maybe I'll switch this to a different color, but point being, you do have the capability to color an individual side of your border. All right, well, with the time remaining, let's make the rest of the site actually look cool. So let's target the body and add a background color. So background dash color, and I'm just going to pick black. Let's take our text, which is just color, and let's change this to white, all right? And then with our border for the H1 header tag, let's perhaps make this white. So that is border, color, white. All right, let's see what this looks like. I would say that's pretty decent for a beginner's website. That looks pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much this lesson on borders in CSS. If you would like a copy of this markup, I'll post it in the comments down below and pin it to the top. But yeah, that is how borders work in CSS. Hey you, if you enjoyed this lesson, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.